So hello everybody, my name is uh, Sam Wood, I'm the Business Development Manager here at Navtech Radar, I'm joined with um, Amir from Oxbotica. Hi, my name is Amir Aziz, I'm the Technical Lead for Localization and Radar Localization product here at Oxbotica. This is a presentation from the partnership of, of Navtech and Oxbotica. Now, Navtech has a 20 year a track record of designing, manufacturing, delivering quality radar solutions for mission critical applications. And we're partnering with Oxbotica for this product. Amir, would you be able to give a bit of an overview of Oxbotica? Yeah, absolutely. So Oxbotica is one of the world's leading autonomous driving software companies. And we build software for real world applications, drawing from our rich heritage in robotics and, robo and field robotics research. We deploy our software across multiple sectors to aim to bring the benefits of autonomy to businesses globally. And we, we've got a rich heritage in uh, localization uh, and mapping software. Within this presentation, we're gonna talk about our new radar localization and, pro and mapping product. And we'll take you through some of the, the field testing we've done in the development um, in different environments and show some of the use cases for, for how it can be applied to autonomous industrial vehicles. We're going to then go through and share some of the commercial benefits for OEMs of, of adopting Taran360 as their robust positioning solution. We're, we're pleased to present our new Taran360 product. So it's a single sensor radar-based localization and mapping solution. So the product provides answers to two fundamental questions for industrial auto autonomous vehicles. Odometry, how have I moved? And localization, where am I? The solution is intended to complement or in some case replace other odometry and localization solutions. Examples of this would be GPS to provide centimeter level positioning. And um, so, so Amir, can you tell us a little bit about the, the product? Yeah, sure. So the Navtech radars are really the perfect sensor for perception based localization. The 360 degree radar provides a really rich amount of data with the advantages of stable long range detections in really all types of conditions and environments, making it a good sensor for these purposes in all types of environments. And the fact that it's been ruggedized um, and is an industrial sensor is really quite an advantage. Rather than trying to make the radar data look like laser data, which is uh, the typical approach, we flip that approach and really aim to include as much of the radar information as possible. Uh, and that really allows Terran360 to deal with the many complexities of different environments and conditions. And we've wrapped that, that approach in some software that's really quite clever and keeps processing time down and is really quite efficient. Thanks Amir. So there, there are many features for Taran360, but I want to highlight five key features. The first one is it's a single sensor solution. It's based on the Navtech 360 degree radar. So only one sensor is needed to provide the localization solution. And so this means it's quick, easy um, for OEMs to implement onto their, their fleets of vehicles. Um, the solution is GNSS and infrastructure free. So there's no need to install beacons. It doesn't have reliance on other systems and, and therefore it can operate in GPS denied environments. Through field testing and through development, we've proven centimeter level accuracy in a wide range of environments. Um, robustness, so the all weather sensor is, is an industrial sensor that's been manufactured for over 20 years now and has been designed for industrial autonomy. Um, and then lastly, the highly efficient algorithm from Oxbotica um, can run on, on very low powered computing units. And what this means is you've got a very scalable system that's all processing required. Now talk about some of the challenges that, that we faced and, and some of the solutions that we found from field testing around 360. Uh, one of the environments that we, we took it to was an off-road environment and, and the radar got covered in mud that you can see from this photo. And one of the benefits of, of radar is you don't need a, you don't have a lens, so you don't need to clear the lens and therefore it was able to operate with mud or splatter over the radar. This is one of the advantages of using a, a radar um, system. So as I said, I want to focus on four distinct use cases. I'll draw some of the particular environments and what types of applications that we, we, we see fit into these different environments. And, and Amir is going to highlight some of the challenges and solutions that we, we work through in developing the product for these environments. The, the first environment I um, tested the, the solution in was in adverse conditions in enclosed environments. In this particular test, this was in an underground mine, but this could also represent a, a vehicle in a tunnel or enclosed area or, or in poor weather, basically where you, you have a lot of features which are very close in and very bad weather. 
So, so Amir, what, what are some of the challenges that we found working in this environment and how, how did we come up with solutions um, to, to overcome these? Yeah, so the, the main challenge in this environment was the really heavy dust conditions and those would really obscure the view and coat the sensors in dust, rendering lasers and cameras unusable. And that meant that the vehicles were essentially stopped and couldn't move uh, until the dust had settled and the sensors had been cleared. The other issues or challenges with the, the environment was the long, narrow tunnels you can see in the video. These were a bit of a repeating environment with limited line of sight for the sensors. And then there were some reflections and multipath issues from the, the steel plates uh, and beams as the, the vehicle drove along. The solutions to these challenges was, one, the radar sensor itself works through dust. So there wasn't any need to stop or pause while the dust settled. The, the radar could work just as before, even in the dusty environment. And this is true for weather conditions like rain, snow, fog. The long range sensor means that the radar can see all the way down to the end of the tunnel, or at least significantly further down the tunnel, which means we've got more data and more detections to use for localization and odometry. There's the software and the algorithms are able to handle and deal with multi-path effects and multiple reflections from different artifacts in the environment and prune these out to ensure that they're only using the stable features. Overall, the system performed really well in this dusty enclosed environments and again achieved centimeter level accuracy and precision. So the second environment we're, we're speaking about is almost the opposite. So this is testing in environments with very, very few features that are perhaps far away or small in number. So this particular data that you're looking at now was recorded on the, the River Thames, and we were looking at solving GPS denied edge cases for autonomous vessels. Feature sparse style of environment could represent a number of different applications, such as a large field, um, a large mine site, basically anywhere with barren or has very few observable features around it. Clearly there are some challenges around this in there. What, what, what are they and how did we overcome them? Yeah, so, so the first one was that the, the platform was unstable. So this meant there were small amounts of roll and pitch. While this was on water, uh, the same can be true for bumpy environments or environments where there's an unstable surface under the vehicle. The other aspect of this environment was that the features were quite far away from the vehicle. So there was nothing in the near field, uh, in the near sort of 100 to 150 meters, and all of the features were uh, concentrated up to 500 meters away. And there were also feature sparse areas. So there, there are a low number of features to use for estimation. The, the solutions were really that the, the long range nature of the radar and the divergent beam means that we are able to deal with more changes in roll and pitch, and that doesn't massively affect the radar scan itself. So the, the features remain stable and are, and are usable for localization and odometry. The algorithms and the software is also able to handle cases where you've got features quite far away and even a low number of features, as long as they're stable and we have a small amount of features, we can still uh, get very accurate localization uh, and odometry estimates. So quite different to the previous environment, but again, something that the system and the radar data is very um, suitable for. The third environment is, is again different. So these are environments where you have dynamic obstacles. So lots of things moving around the scene. And this particular data was recorded in, a, in an urban environment in a city. But this, this could represent shuttles. This could re represent ports where you've got other moving obstacles around or logistics and warehousing. So I imagine with lots of things moving around, it's difficult for, this, for the system. Could you, could you talk through some of those kind of challenges? Yeah, so in general, having lots of things moving around uh, around the system means it's difficult to discern from a sensor, whether it's the vehicle moving or if, uh, if there are things just moving around it. Because of the built up nature of the environment, there's also a large number of features being detected by the radar, in some cases too many. And then the, the speed uh, of objects moving as well as the speed of the vehicle moving it, it itself. So the solutions to these problems were that the, the system is quite fast and efficient in terms of processing all of that data and, and using all of those features. It's also robust to dynamic obstacles in the environment and is able to prune out or ignore essentially those, 
those obstacles that are moving and use the stable static structures in the environment to really estimate its position and uh, orientation. And we're also, again, able to prune out the features that, we, that, that aren't usable to keep processing down. So we're, we're quite fast and efficient, but we're also able to ignore various um, bits of the data so that, we're, so that we ensure that we achieve the, the frame rate and the frequency of localization estimates that we want. So quite a different environment, more of a built up environment with moving obstacles, which again, the system is very uh, capable in. So the, the final environment I want to speak about is a hybrid environment. So this is accumulation of some of all of the environments that we, we've spoken about to space, where you've got multi environments. And this is typical of sites which are larger, which have parts of the site which are different. So a good example of this would be in forestry material, trains through urban and then out of, out of cross country environments. Amir, how, how do we cope with these challenges and what are the challenges of working in this environment? As you mentioned, it's a combination of a lot of the environments we've seen in the previous slides uh, with very long routes up to 64 kilometers in some cases, which means that there's potentially a lot of data and a lot of data to store in a map. The mixture of environments means that the algorithms need to deal with all types of environments and cases where you've got some areas with lots of features nearby and some cases where you've got sparse features far away. And then the, the vehicle was moving at a very high speed, up to 120 kilometers an hour in some cases. So the way we solve these problems, uh, we have very data efficient maps, meaning we don't need a huge amount of data stored in our map to be able to accurately localize anywhere along that map. Uh, we're actually in the order of tens of megabytes per kilometer for our maps. That means a small footprint in terms of data storage on the unit. We have a place recognition module, which allows the localization system to boot up and initialize anywhere in the map at any time. So there's no need to have the vehicle starting at specific places uh, in the route or, or any sort of manual intervention to initialize the system. The algorithms require minimal tuning as well. So there isn't a huge parameter space that needs to be manually tuned to, to be able to deal with the changing uh, environment and the system actually adapts itself to be able to work seamlessly going from a sparse environment to one with lots of features and moving obstacles. And so it makes quite a good product. I want to finish off with the commercial benefits that we see to adopting Turan 360 at uh, the localization solution. So one of the huge advantages that can't be understated is the fact that radar works in all weather conditions. You just simply don't get that level of performance in these environments um, with lasers and cameras. We've proven the performance in dusty conditions. We've proven it in low light. We've proven the performance in adverse weather conditions, say fog, rain, sleet, snow. And what we've also found is that the sensor doesn't require maintenance or cleaning. If we then combine this with the fact that the Navtec sensor has been in production now for almost 20 years, you get a proven ruggedized industrial sensor. Amir, for, from a software perspective, what, what do you see as a kind of key commercial benefits? Yeah, sure. So from, from a software point of view, our infrastructure-free solution means that we have no reliance on GPS or any external systems. So in a single sensor with a single low-powered compute unit, you get a full localization, odometry, and mapping solution really built into a compact package meaning that deployment integration is, is very fast. And we, we really have a solution that can complement existing solutions like, like GPS, but can also be run standalone uh, to provide positioning for, for vehicles in, in all types of environments. So I think it's fair to say in general, that the Turan 360 solution aims to enable autonomous operations to have more uptime, to, to deliver lower operational costs, and realize those kind of higher productivity, higher efficiency, higher safety for the end user. As you've seen, we've been running a wide range of customer trials with early access customers, but we're always keen to test a product in more environments, more applications. So we'd love to hear from you about any projects that you've got, and we would want to work with your engineers so that you can evaluate the results in your own environment and prove it on your fleet of vehicles. If you'd like to discuss a potential trial of Turan360, please get in contact. Um, I want to thank Amir as well 
Um, thank you for joining me on, on, on this um, presentation and thank you very much. Thanks, Sam. Cheers.